Did you know that a 911 operator receives hundreds of calls each day? Of those calls, some are particularly interesting. In the following hour, we will hear some of the most interesting 911 calls and their backstories. In a small town near the Robertson County Fairgrounds, a routine day took a dramatic turn in January 2023, leading to a remarkable water rescue that showcased the strength of community spirit. 911 location of your emergency. Uh, yes, we got two teenage girls in the water at the old dam uh, down by the fairgrounds. Uh, we need uh, emergency service immediately. Uh, one looks to be unconscious. Uh, one is floating. Okay. Yeah. And you said you're right there at the, the fairgrounds? In the yeah, water. they're in the water uh, down by the dam. At the right in front of the, where the old dam comes across, where Can they have tell, the farmer's they, flea market. Okay. Can you tell if they're breathing? One is. One does not look like she is. Uh, they look to be 12 to 14. Did they look like they were going swimming or like they fell in? I have no idea. Uh, maybe swim. I don't know. They were on skateboards or skateboards here. Uh, the, one of the girls, she's already turned blue, looks like. Do you have someone in route? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, is there somebody that can wave help down when they get over there? Uh, yeah, my wife's down at the bank. One of us, uh, well, they can see us from the bridge. When they get to the bridge, they'll be able to see us. Okay, so when they're at Memorial on the bridge, they'll be able to see you? Yes, uh-huh. I can hear the sirens now. Okay, I, I'm going to stay on the phone with you until somebody's out there with you guys, okay? Can you still see both the girls? Uh, yeah, one girl's swimming. She, the other, she's got a hold to the other one. Okay, the ambulance is turning in. Okay. While strolling nearby, a concerned couple witnessed a perilous situation unfold. Two teenagers, Cheyenne Walters and her 16-year-old friend, found themselves in distress as Cheyenne fell into the water while trying to retrieve a toy ball. The couple promptly dialed 911, initiating a critical chain of events that would highlight the power of community intervention. Responding to the emergency, the couple became impromptu heroes. Utilizing their dog leash, they assisted the teens, ensuring they weren't left to face the danger alone. Crossing a nearby bridge, a couple with a law enforcement background witnessed the unfolding crisis. Without hesitation, they made a U-turn and rushed to the creek. The husband bravely entered the water while his wife, Angela Looney, provided crucial support. Working in tandem, they managed to lift Cheyenne from the water and facilitated life-saving CPR, awaiting the arrival of emergency medical services. Quickly transported to TriStar Centennial Children's Hospital in Nashville, Cheyenne faced a critical condition, and the dedicated efforts of those at the scene played a pivotal role in her survival. Robertson County EMS Director Brent Dyer said, These folks definitely stepped in and worked to help save some lives. The first hero in this situation is hands down the friend. This other teenage girl who risked her own life by going into the water first to hold her friend up and to work to rescue her as she went unconscious in her arms. A GoFundMe campaign later assisted in raising over $5,000 for Cheyenne's medical expenses. After months, including time in the ICU and therapy in Atlanta, Cheyenne returned home. Her journey to recovery continues as she relearns basic skills. In times of crisis, ordinary individuals can become extraordinary heroes. This story reminds us that unity and selflessness can turn a dire situation into a beacon of hope. This teenager tried to cover up his horrible crime by lying to 911. 911, where's your emergency? Hi, yes, um, uh, I just had an intruder over in my apartment. Okay, hold on, where, where is that located? Um, the intruder is down. Um, I, I shot him with my, with my weapon. Okay. Uh, I need the address. No longer... I need the address. Oh, my apologies, sir. It's going to be at, um... Street in Chandler? Yes, ambulance and is needed. And... Okay, hold on, the apartment number? Uh, it's going to be 2031. 2031, okay, hold on. Hold on, let me let me get the paramedics online. Hold on, please. Fire department, what is the address of your emergency? Hi, uh, yes, I had an intruder alert over at my house. It's over on Street. Okay. All right. 
Um, but you're saying it's somebody breaking into your house? No, somebody has broken into my house. Um, I was in the other room when I heard the the back door opening on my balcony. Okay. And that's when I, I grabbed my my uh, my pistol. Um, the suspect is down. Are you still on the line? Yes, we are. Yes. Okay. Is was there a fire or some you sort said, of medical he said he injury? Shot the intruder. Uh, okay. He's very All right. Injured. I, I might have hit him in the in the right or left uh, shoulder blade, so we might have a serious uh, issue here. Where where is the suspect at, sir? Okay, the suspect is located right about ten feet from the back balcony door. Um, is, is, I was in the kitchen when I noticed him, and he is now parallel with the door and the uh, well, the kitchen. Okay, so he's on your patio. No, no, he's inside my house right now. Um, I I fired one round, um, and it appears to uh, have gone through his skull. It appears to have gone through his skull or his shoulder blade. Um, uh, um, hopefully it's not his skull. Uh, I believe it might might have been his right cheek. Okay. Oh, one second. My, one second, man. My girlfriend's freaking out right now. Okay, sir. Where is the weapon right now? Uh, I have the weapon right now on my hip. Okay, is it holstered? Yeah, uh, holstered. Yes. Sir, is the guy moving, the guy moving at all? Is he respond responding? Hello. Sir. Is, hey, okay. you. You. You okay, man? Uh, no, no, sir. He. He's unresponsive. Okay, sir. I'm, uh, I'm. What I need you to do right now is if you can step outside right now. Take your girlfriend okay. with you. You're gonna step outside. Take me on the phone with you. The officers are asking. This. Okay, hold, hold on okay. one second. Let me, let me check that gun real quick. I don't want you to step out yet. Hold on. Okay. The, uh, honestly, officer, uh, as, as, as sorry as I, I am to say, I, I believe the suspect is deceased. Okay, listen. Okay, the, I'm getting this from the officer. Keep your weapon holstered. Okay, and you're gonna go outside with your girlfriend to meet the officers. Uh, yes, sir. Would you like me to go out there right now? Yes, go out there right now. Okay, come out. Actually, my girlfriend just took my took my my weapon. Where's okay. where's my pistol that he, that I had? They need to see that. Okay, so it's not holstered. No, it, it is holstered. She just grabbed it off. I took it off my hip. It is. I had it holstered when he uh, came in through the back door. Okay. Where is the weapon right now? The weapon is on my hip. On your hip. Okay. Leave it there. You and your girlfriend are to step outside and meet the officer. Okay. Keep your hands up just so the officers can see your weapon, see your hands clear from it. Okay. And you're just going to stay on the phone with me. I'm sorry, sir? Just stay Wait, on the yeah, phone yeah. with me just so I can just stay on the phone with me until I know that you're with the officers. All right, yes, sir. Walking out of my bedroom. And is your girlfriend right next to you? Yeah. Are you out the door? Hello, sir. The day was just past 8 a.m. on New Year's Eve when a chilling call led police to a second-floor apartment in Chandler, Arizona. Nathaniel Thomas reported that he had witnessed an unidentified man entering his apartment through the sliding door, seemingly angry, and reaching for something in his sweatpants. In what seemed like a self-defense response, Thomas took out his gun and shot the man, later identified as Gage Bodenheimer. When law enforcement arrived, they found Bodenheimer deceased, prompting a thorough investigation. Investigators gathered statements from witnesses who had spent the night at the apartment. This is when the story took an unexpected turn. It was revealed that Bodenheimer was inside Nathaniel Thomas's apartment that morning, and there was no sign of a break-in. According to one of the witnesses, Thomas had allegedly pointed a gun at Bodenheimer as a joke while he was sleeping on the floor, attempting to wake him up. In a tragic turn of events, Thomas pulled the trigger, believing that the gun was empty. As investigators delved further into the case, they discovered that the initial story about an intruder was fabricated. When confronted with the mounting evidence against him, Nathaniel Thomas persisted in his falsehoods. In time, Thomas altered his version of events, asserting that the gun discharged because Bodenheimer had attempted to reach for it. Additionally, investigators unearthed a significant detail about Thomas's background. He had a lengthy history of using firearms, having completed his first firearm safety course at the tender age of five. The 19-year-old was subsequently arrested and booked on charges of second-degree murder and indifference to human life.
In March 2022, an emergency operator in southwest Florida received a distressing call from a guest at Wooten's Airboats. The caller reported a tiger attack on a 48-year-old employee. Tiger County 911, what is the address of your location? I'm at Wooten uh, Animal Farm, the airboat ride. I think another guy's calling you. The man's just been attacked by a tiger. He needs, uh, he needs a dust off. Okay, what is the address there? Do you know? Hang on just a second. The address. I have no clue what the address Okay, it's at Wooten. Airboat runs. Okay. And it's on US 41. Okay, one moment. And he was attacked by a, a tiger? Yeah, yeah. Still in the enclosure. Okay. okay. Still in the enclosure. Everybody's safe, but you're going to need a, you're gonna need a helicopter. Okay. Yeah. Is, is the male awake? He's awake. He's awake. Is, is he breathing? He is breathing. There's three gentlemen in the enclosure with him. I'm a guest. Is he still in the enclosure with the tiger? They are still. They, no, no. He's outside of the enclosure. He got out, but the tiger got him. What kind of injuries does he have? Uh, looks like he's uh, got arm injuries. Yeah, his uh, his right uh, left arm is uh, pretty mangled. His legs look okay. He's alert. Okay, how old is he? He looks to be about 50 years old. Okay. Maybe 45. Okay, is the bleeding controlled to his arm? Uh, I don't see any vascular bleeding, uh, but he is mauled pretty good. Okay. Is there, is there... there grass, so I can't tell. But uh, there's there's a lot. It, it doesn't look vascular to me right now. Is it serious bleeding? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's definitely he's in danger of losing his arm. Okay. Hang on, guys. I was a combat lifesaver in the army. You mind if I jump in? All right. Do you have something that you I'm can a combat use? Combat lifesaver in the army. I can help. Yeah. Okay. You have something you can use as a tourniquet? Yeah. Hang on. Okay. I don't. I'm real, real bad. No, he doesn't have any vascular bleeding. Uh, I don't even think we need a tourniquet. We are down to the tendon, though. Yeah. Okay. What's up, you don't... Okay. Calm oh. down. You're okay. All right. What is your name, sir? No, no, no. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay, buddy. Okay. Um, and look, both arms. On the phone, Rick. We're down to the tendon and the, and the muscle. Okay, on both arms? We do not have any, not have any red, red bleeding. Okay. So nothing, it's not... Nothing to put a tourniquet on. Okay. Was he inside uh, of the enclosure when it attacked him? It looked that way, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and the tiger is still. Hey, buddy, just keep your arms keep your arms still, right in front of you. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need a dust off. Okay, where exactly are you guys? They're they're on scene right now. We're in the back. We're in the back. They're coming out to get them right now. Okay, we got we got a police officer. On. Yes, there's a deputy on scene, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start. Well, let's let's let the police officer make the decision. I think uh, I think you are going to have to send an helicopter to out to where he is. Yeah. Okay. I'm not from here. I'm from Alaska County, so I'll figure it out. Hey, it, he's probably going to need a dust off. We need to start looking for an LZ. Uh, yeah. This will be your personnel call. That out. Okay, they'll figure it out. All right. All right. Thank you, sir, for all of your help. The incident began when Ignacio Martinez, a 48-year-old mechanic at Wooten's Airboats entered the enclosure of an 18-year-old Siberian tiger named Daisy without authorization. The tiger's caretaker, having just finished feeding Daisy, warned Martinez that he was not authorized to be in the enclosure. Martinez reportedly insisted that as fellow employees, they had the same right to be there. Ignoring the warning, Martinez picked up a piece of chicken and extended his hand into the enclosure. Daisy, the Siberian tiger, initially took the offering but dropped it and bit two of Martinez's fingers. The situation escalated when she pulled his arm into the enclosure and swiped at it with her claws. Witnesses described Martinez trying to free himself, reaching into the pen with his right arm. Unfortunately, the male Bengal tiger, Daruba, bit down on his arm. The caretaker intervened, spraying water at the animals. Daruba released his bite, but Daisy held on. The caretaker had to physically pull Martinez by the torso until he was free. First responders arrived at the scene, finding Martinez with no recollection of being bitten by the second tiger. Reports suggested Martinez might have been intoxicated at the time. Martinez was rushed to the hospital with injuries to his arms. Doctors, thankfully, were able to provide the necessary care. After a period of observation, Martinez was discharged and deemed ready to return home. Remarkably, neither of the tigers sustained any injuries during the incident. The focus shifted to animal welfare, ensuring the safety and well-being of the animals involved.
The Tiger encounter at Wooten's airboats serves as a stark reminder of the importance of following safety protocols, especially in environments where wild animals are present. The incident prompts reflection on the balance between human activities and the natural instincts of these majestic creatures. This 911 dispatcher is being called a hero for what she did when a mute man called for help. Cleveland, please, can you hear me? Is that you telling me you can hear me? Okay, I'm going to take the banging as a yes. So, do you require police? Are you hurt in any way? So, just to confirm, bang again. Are you hurt? It, bang again if you are. And bang again if you need an ambulance. Okay, are you on your own? Right, okay. Need to know, is it your breathing? Are you breathing okay? Bang if it's a yes. Right, am I right in saying that you're struggling with your breathing? Okay. From your breathing, do you have any other injuries? Are you on the floor? Okay, you're not. Are you in bed? You're in bed. Okay. Let you know I've rang an ambulance, okay? We'll get somebody there for you, all right? Okay, just stay there and we, well, we will be with you soon. Can you bang again for yes? Is the door unlocked? So the door is is locked. Bang if it's for a yes. Is the door locked? Right, okay. Um, just wondering how we're going to get in. So we'll need to get police to get break into your property, okay? Right, why are you banging so heavy? Is that okay? Bang for yes again. Are you able to go to your front door and unlock it? You are. Okay, well, I suggest you go to the front door. I suggest you go to the front door and unlock the front door. Can you do that? Knock for yes. Okay. We've got an ambulance on the way, all right? Good. Okay, we'll be there soon, all right? Catherine Longstaff, an experienced 911 dispatcher for the Cleveland Police in England faced a life-altering call that day. A mute man dialed 999, desperately seeking help. His only means of communication was by knocking. Catherine's remarkable ability to interpret the knocks quickly kicked into gear as she recognized the urgency of the situation. She promptly coordinated emergency services to the man's location, ensuring they arrived in time. Thanks to Catherine's swift actions, responders arrived at the man's home and saved his life just in the nick of time. The 63-year-old man had contacted the police before, and their records contained his name and phone number. His primary mode of communication was a simple whiteboard, which had been his lifeline. After his miraculous rescue, the man used that very same whiteboard to express his heartfelt gratitude. He extended his appreciation to everyone involved in saving his life, with a special mention for Catherine Longstaff, the dispatcher who understood his silent plea. This story reminds us that heroes can be found in unexpected places, and sometimes they're the ones answering your call in times of crisis. Let's celebrate the extraordinary efforts of people like Catherine who make a difference when it matters most. In the chilling winter of January 2015, a routine evening turned into a life-threatening ordeal for a Melbourne family. My dad was trying to light a fire, and then this, it actually started a fire in the house, and my dad's been badly burned. All right, the ambulance is already on the way. Please. I want you to stay calm for me. You're okay, doing really well. I know. I know how scary this is for you, Dale. The ambulance is coming. I want you to take a slow deep breath and I need you to help me, okay? Okay. Now, I understand that Dad's been burnt. What I need to know is how many people are hurt? Just him. I really okay. told you I ran for safety because we got really scared. He jumped in the pool because he got caught on fire. Okay. Now, is anything still burning or smouldering? Um, I haven't had a look because 
I just came around the back because I got really scared. Is the house still on fire? Okay, Georgia just said she took out the fire. So is Dad yes. completely awake? Yeah, he's completely awake. All right, reassure him the ambulance is already coming there, okay? Okay, the ambulance now, is coming, Dad. What parts of his body were burned? Um, all over, yeah, all over. Now, we want him to call the burns. Yeah, he's in the pool right now. He's in now. the pool at the moment, is he? He's, he's shaking to death. Okay, so obviously we don't want him getting too cold. If he is yeah. getting too cold there and he's starting to get those shakes, we may need to get him out of the pool. Dad, if you're shaking a lot, they want you to get out of the pool, okay? Would you go wait out the front for the ambulance? I'm so, so scared, Dad. You're doing so well, okay? You're okay, Dad? How? Mm-hmm. Tell him not to move around for the moment. Okay, don't move around at the moment, is it okay? Can we sit him down on the couch? Yeah, just keep him resting comfortably for me, okay? He's laying on the counter now because he's in pain. I understand he's in pain there, okay? Is the ambulance nearly here? Yeah, they're coming as quickly as they can for you, darling, all right? So is Dad still completely awake? Yeah, he's still awake, but he's in pain. I understand he's in a lot of pain. Will he have to go to hospital? It's very likely, given the way you've described his burns, that he should. Because how old are you, Ebony? I'm 11 years old. Uh, Ebony, you've done a wonderful job for that. Dennis and his family were engaged in a simple game of Monopoly when he decided to use petrol to light their fireplace. In a tragic turn of events, the petrol exploded, engulfing Dennis in flames. Reacting swiftly, Ebony and her 11-year-old sister, Georgia, fled for safety and dialed triple zero. Ebony, with remarkable composure, informed the operator about her father's dire situation. As the ambulance raced to their aid, Dennis, in an instinctive move, jumped into the pool to extinguish the flames. Ebony, guided by the triple zero operator, played a crucial role in ensuring her father's safety. As Dennis struggled in pain in the water, Ebony, with courage beyond her years, persuaded her father to leave the pool. Following the operator's instructions, she performed first aid, stabilizing him until paramedics arrived. Ebony's swift actions and level-headedness saved her father from the clutches of the burning inferno. For their exceptional bravery, Ebony and Georgia, the junior triple zero heroes, were rightfully honored. Their courage in the face of a life-threatening emergency showcased the significant impact quick thinking and decisive action can have during critical moments. Dennis, though suffering substantial burns, ultimately recovered, a testament to the strength and bravery displayed by his daughters in the face of an unimaginable crisis. This harrowing incident serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of emergency awareness and the potential for ordinary individuals, even children, to become heroes in times of adversity. In December 2011, in Orange County, Florida, a teenager locked herself in her room when thieves invaded her home. 911, what is your emergency? Okay, I called before, and I already, they came back. I I, I think I'm an American guy. I don't know what you're talking about, ma'am. What address is this at? Sorry. They broke my, my back. I'm sorry? Okay, you have to calm down, please. I don't understand what you're saying. What happened? Someone is trying to enter my house. They already did. Someone did what? They're entering my house right now. They're two. There's two guys trying to break American into guys. your house? Yes. They're two really young African American guys. They're 17. Or like 17, between 17 and 24 years old. And how are they trying to get in? They broke my back landing door. Broke the back slider? Landing doors in the back, in the patio. They broke the back door open? Yeah. Yeah. How old are you? Oh my God, 17. Please hurry up. Any weapons? Do you see any weapons? Are you hiding? Yes, I'm in my closet. You're where? In my closet. Please hurry up. Do you have any weapons? No. Are they still inside? Yes, they're like roving. I don't care if they're doing it. I'm sorry, they're what? They're stealing. I think they're confusing. Stay on the line. Let me have a dispatcher. Do not hang up. Stay on the line. Do you know what they were wearing? Are you trying to be quiet or something? What? Do you know what they were wearing? I, I, okay. 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 Them, I didn't see the other one. One of them is wearing a white, a, a black t-shirt. 
A white or a black t-shirt? Black t-shirt. Do you know them? No. Have you ever seen them before? Never anymore. Okay. Okay. They're trying to call me my room. Shh. Okay. They're trying to call me my room. Okay. Shh. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. They left on foot. What kind of car are they in? Do you see? Are they gone? No, they're in the in my driveway. Okay. What kind of car are they in? The Toyota Harley. What color? What? Are they are they backing out? Are they leaving? Yeah, they left. It was a chilly December night in Orange County, 2011 when a teenage girl's world was turned upside down. With intruders in her home, she found herself trapped in her room, fearing for her safety. Darkness enveloped her as the thieves entered her home, stealthily moving through the silent night. Panic surged within her, but she knew she had to act fast. With a trembling hand, she locked her bedroom door, her heart racing as the intruders continued their unlawful raid. They scoured her home, pilfering her belongings, inching closer to her safe haven. The ominous realization that they were trying to breach her room sent shivers down her spine. But the teenage girl's resilience and quick thinking would change the course of the night. Her locked door became an impenetrable barrier, a symbol of her unwavering determination. The thieves, sensing their plan had been thwarted, made a hasty escape. Fleeing in a white car, they left behind the trail of fear they had sown. However, their ill-fated escape was destined to meet its end. Racing through the city streets, they ran a red light, and the consequences of their criminal endeavor finally caught up with them. What could have been a night of terror transformed into a story of resilience and bravery. In the darkness of that December night, a teenage girl's determination became her shield, and justice was not far behind. In January 2012, actress Demi Moore made headlines when a 911 call was placed from her Los Angeles home. Okay, hold on, because you got LA City. Hold on. What's your telephone number you're calling from? I'm going to give you my numbers if I don't know who's this and someone somebody just handled to me. Uh, you can call me back on 310. Hold on. 310? Yes. Can you please send her, like, as quick right as possible? Yeah. Like right now, this is an emergency. And what's the uh, what's the other uh, cross road there? Sir, this is an emergency. Ma'am, 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 ma'am. I'm trying to get the address. You're in Beverly Hills. Yes. Okay. What is the address, Ru? Uh, let me get Beverly Hills. Hold on. Yes, that is in Beverly Hills. Can you close that door for a minute? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hold on, ma'am. There. Are you there? Yes. Okay, hold on. Beverly Hills can answer the phone right now. Beverly Hills Fire. Hey, Beverly Hills, Hi. uh, LA City Fire over here. We got a lady at... But in Beverly Hills, we need an ambulance here as soon as possible, please. Okay. Why is an ambulance not on its way right now? Ma'am, is instead of so arguing with me why an ambulance is not on the way, can you spell it for me? I'm sorry? Instead of arguing with me, can you spell it for me, please? Okay. Okay, yeah, sir, that's not going to be ours. My supervisor is advising me at LA City. That's it coming up in LA City? That's what he's advising me. Okay. Hey. All right, we'll handle this, uh, Beverly Hills. Okay, thank you. Is an ambulance on the way? Hold on, ma'am, hold on. Okay, tell me exactly what happened there. Okay, uh, she smoked, um, something. It's not marijuana, but it's similar to, it's, it's similar to incense. And she seems to be having convulsions of some sort. Okay. Are you with the person at this time? I, I'm actually in the other room. Okay. You gotta, yes. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be next to her so I can ask some questions that we have paramedics on the way. Okay. How old is she? I have to be right next to her. Okay. Hold on. How old is she? She is, how old is Demi? Hold on a sec. You guys, you guys. I have ma'am, a paramedic that needs it. Just roughly, yeah? roughly. Okay, we just need an ambulance here. Ma'am, as as you can. Yeah? Listen to the question. How old is she, roughly? How old is me? 49. Okay, right now, is she awake? Yes, well, semi conscious, barely. Okay, is she breathing? Is she breathing? Yes. Okay, and she over. 
so no. Uh, she's convulsing. Okay, listen to me. Keep watching her closely. Don't do anything. Uh -huh. Don't put anything in her mouth. Um, we're was, not. Was this accidental or intentional? Uh, well, it was. She smoked something, you know, but the reaction was accidental. Listen, help is already on the way. I'm looking at the okay. map. It looks like... And how long is it? You're getting your local fire station, and you just do stuff, asking questions, and listen to what i got to ask you, okay? Yes, hold on. I'm giving you to another person. When they get here, they must hit the gate code, which is... Okay, ma'am. Sir, the gate code when okay, they get here. Okay, listen, listen. Send somebody down to the bottom of the gate to open the gate for the paramedics. Okay. Are they down there? You got, no, they're already on the way. Okay, great. Can you, um... Ma'am, listen to what I'm asking you. Pay attention, yes. okay? Yes, I hear you. Come on at the gate. Is she breathing normally? No, um, no not so normal, but uh, more sort of shaking. Okay. Both things to me. Uh, but burning up. All right, and what does she take? Um, some form of, uh, I think, a, and then she smoked something I didn't really see. Okay. Um, she's been having some issues lately with some other stuff, so I don't know what she's been taking and not... All right, listen, oh, help is already away. Stay on line with me until we get there. Looks like Halsom uh, Road is a major street there, right? Looks like, uh... Can you guys get me Andrea? Get me Andrea. Get me Andrea. Hello, sir. Okay, and then... there's me. To me. To me. right here. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Are you, yes. are, you, are you next to her right now? Yes, I am. Yes. And I'm trying to do two things at once. So what do you suggest I can do to make anything better? All right, listen. Help, help is already on the way? Yes. Okay, all we're going to do right now, we're just going to watch her closely. We're not going to give her anything sweet or drink. Okay. Nope, I'm just, I'm just taking cold water and putting it on her back because she's burning up. I don't know what would have made her do that. Okay. Andrea, is they, you someone have to open the gate. Make sure someone's down at the gate to open it. Is that a dirt road? Is that a private road? What is that? It's a private road. Okay, then have somebody go to the very bottom where the uh, normal uh, road is at. That way they can flag them down when they get Coming in, yes. Yes, I'll send someone out there. James? Sir. I'm right here, ma'am. It was she's bringing up you suggest and just keep putting cold water on her. No, no, this is what I want you to do. Are you are you next to her right now? Yes. Okay. Is she able to respond to you? To me, can you hear me? Yeah, she's squeezing hands. She can't speak. Okay. If, she, okay. if she's not completely passed down, this is what I want you to do. Don't give her anything to eat or drink. Mm -hmm. Okay, have her rest in a position of comfort away for the paramedic. Yeah, but okay. she's convulsing, so we're holding her down. Yeah, yeah you don't have to hold her down. Don't, okay. put, don't put anything on her mouth. Don't hold her down. Don't do okay. CPR. And I turned her head to the side. Right, good. Just keep watching her. Anything comes out of her mouth, just wipe it down. Okay. Uh, she's able to talk to you, or she's able to understand what you're asking her, so she's not completely passed out. No. So right now, we're just going to watch her until the paramedics get there. I really just think she's nervous in the music. Okay. And just keep watching her. I'll hang up. No, no. Please, please. I, I don't know. Um, hold on, sir. I'm just holding her head. Um, I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, just, just if anything comes out of her mouth, just make sure that we wipe her mouth and note. Make sure that we keep an airway open. Okay. Uh, regardless of whatever okay. happens, make sure that the airway is open. Even if she passes out completely, that's okay. Stay right with her. Make sure that you guys don't put anything on her. Don't give her anything. And whatever she took, make sure that you have it out for the paramedics. Okay. Has she done this before? I, I don't know. There's uh, been some stuff recently that we're all just finding out. Is she, is she a friend, relative? Who is she? Friend. Okay. Hey, James, can, I'm sorry, sir, I'm just going to hold your head and put you on the phone with somebody else. I'm sorry, hold on. Okay, cool. I'm here with you. All right, just make sure that you just keep watching or let me know if anything changes. Help is already on the way. Okay, just make sure you have somebody at the bottom of the gate. That way, uh... Yeah, they're down there right now. Because I'm looking at what appears to be, uh... Oh. Okay, there it is. We got to go towards the right. Where th yeah, where there's like a gate entrance. So it's kind of a right and then a right. Right, okay. All right, just just keep watching her. Let me know if anything changes. Uh, okay, she, she seems to have calmed down all of a okay. sudden. She's speaking. All right, make um, sure that you don't give her anything to eat or drink. And if, even if she starts convulsing again, uh, okay. just just keep watching her. Don't put anything in her mouth and keep okay. any, any dangerous up to objects away from her. So just, uh, okay, so, so no water, no nothing? No, nothing. Nothing until they get there. Because in case they have to give her medicine, we don't want her getting sick. Right, right. Okay, that sounds good. But you get in your local fire station, so they're coming up the hill there. Great. Okay, great. It's a house sort of right on the corner before it turns. Yeah, they're coming down. How's it doing right now? Are you there, sir? Hello. Okay, make sure you don't hang up. Okay, yeah, no, no, I'm staying with you. How's she doing right now? She's much calmer. Okay, good. Anything um, change? Is she still breathing okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, she, now she's breathing fine. She's not convulsing, and she's breathing fine. She seems very calm. She's leaning up and sort of talking quiet. Let me know when you start hearing the paramedics. Okay, close to me. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm right here. It looks like they're at the gate right now. 
Okay. Can you see somebody? Can you see that location uh, from your house at the gate? No, I can't. And you said you have somebody at the gate, right? Um, that's what they said. Are those the lights coming okay. up from the thing? That looks, it looks like they're right here. Will you run out and get them, babe? Okay, great. I'm going to stay on with you for just one more second in case that isn't them. Yeah, let me know when uh, you see them coming up the uh, hill there. They should be at the gate right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I can hear the car. Okay, so you can see the paramedics? Yeah, I can see them right now. Let me know when they're coming up. Yeah, here they come. Right in here. They're right here now. I've got them. Okay, okay. Go, go ahead and talk to them. They're going to help you out. Okay, thanks for the help. Thank you so much. On the evening of January 23, 2012, emergency services responded to a 911 call from Demi Moore's residence in Los Angeles. While the specifics of the call were not disclosed to the public, it was reported that the actress was experiencing health issues and required medical attention. Moore, who had recently announced her separation from then-husband Ashton Kutcher, was reportedly struggling with exhaustion and other health concerns. The incident occurred amidst speculation about the toll that personal and professional stressors were taking on her well-being. Following the 911 call, Moore was transported to a hospital for treatment. Initial reports suggested that she was seeking professional help for exhaustion and to address her overall health. However, subsequent reports indicated that substance abuse may have also played a role in her hospitalization. The media coverage surrounding Moore's health scare was extensive, with speculation and rumors circulating about the circumstances that led to the 911 call. The incident served as a reminder of the intense scrutiny and pressure that celebrities often face, particularly during challenging personal times. In the wake of her hospitalization, Moore entered a period of recovery and sought treatment to address her physical and emotional well-being. Her representatives released statements acknowledging her decision to prioritize her health and seek professional support. The incident sparked a broader conversation about the importance of mental health awareness and the need to destigmatize seeking help for emotional challenges. Moore's openness about her struggles helped to shed light on the fact that even successful and seemingly put together individuals can face difficulties and require support. Demi Moore's 2012 health scare served as a poignant reminder that celebrities, like all individuals, are not immune to the challenges of mental health and personal struggles. The incident highlighted the importance of prioritizing self-care, seeking help when needed, and fostering a supportive environment that encourages open discussions about mental well-being. In August 2020, a young teenager's paddleboarding adventure took a scary turn. Separated from his board in rough waters, he found himself in a life-threatening situation. Luckily, his waterproof pouch had his phone in it, and he was able to make a 911 call. Coast Guard Rescue. Oh my God, thank you. I, I'm, I'm like 400 now, now 400 meters off the coast. Uh, to, I don't know where it is, but it's on a flight port fairly, uh, 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 the, the two islands off the coast. Yeah, near so what, there. What's the issue with it? Mate? What's, the, what's the problem? You want a paddleboard or a kayak or what are you doing at the moment? But I had a paddleboard, but now I'm I'm drowning. I have a life ba no life jacket. You have a life jacket. Yeah, I'm really struggling here. Keep calm and rest back and lie back as much as you can with your legs wide apart and confuse your. The waves are really bad now. Oh. That's, that's fine. You will float over the water. What's your name? Alfie. Your name's Alfie. Is your paddleboard near you at all at the moment? No, not at all. And we've requested a helicopter. Uh, we've also requested the Abbasoft lifeboat as well. All right. Just keep All breathing right. in and out slowly. And just relax and you will float. Luckily, you're wearing your life jacket, as you said. How old are you, Alfie? Um, 17. You're 17. I'm starting to get very scared. Please, 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 Alfie, don't panic at all. Um, okay. Oh. Just, just don't, don't panic at all, like I said, just stay on your back, stay calm, okay. and, and like I said, you will float. Where are you? Can you hear the helicopter at all? Can you hear, yes. any, can you hear a helicopter there? It. Hello, Alfie, are you still there? Oh. On a summer day in 2020, 17-year-old Alfie embarked on a paddle boarding adventure 
taking on the challenge of riding some imposing waves near a beach in North Wales. In the midst of the towering waves, a terrifying moment unfolded. Alfie was abruptly separated from his paddleboard, a situation that could have tragically led to being lost at sea. Panic began to set in as he found himself alone in the rough waters. Fortunately, Alfie had the foresight to keep his phone in a waterproof pouch inside his wetsuit, a decision that would prove to be a lifesaver. With determination, he was able to call the Coast Guard Rescue Services for help. Responding swiftly to Alfie's call for help, RNLI lifeboats and a helicopter were dispatched to locate the stranded teenager. Approximately 40 minutes after the call, they successfully located him and pulled him from the water. Alfie was immediately flown to the hospital where he showed signs of hypothermia due to the cold ocean water. However, he was released by medical professionals later that same day, miraculously free from long-lasting injuries. The young teenager had escaped a potentially tragic fate thanks to his waterproof pouch and a rapid response from the rescue teams. The Abersock lifeboat station has been urging individuals planning to go paddleboarding to prioritize safety and preparedness. They emphasize the importance of carrying safety equipment, wearing safety leashes, and carrying a means of communication during every sea excursion. The lifeboat station also underscores the significance of getting the proper training and not exceeding one's capabilities. They stress that someone should always be aware of when you plan to go paddleboarding and when you intend to return. Alfie's harrowing ordeal serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of preparedness, safety, and the critical role of quick thinking when enjoying water activities. In August 2021, a routine dog walk turned into a harrowing encounter for Nikita Brown in Chicago's Lincoln Park. A Chicago police officer, Bruce Diker, allegedly followed and physically confronted her without cause. Listen to the 911 call she made, and the whole story right after that. Chicago emergency crew. Good evening. I need to report. I need, uh, I need to report an incident, and I request um, a sergeant, please. All right. What is the address over there? The address is. Okay. All right. And again, I need to see a sergeant, please. Okay. Can you say? Yes. And what is the emergency? I need to report an incident with with the uh, with the cops. Okay, and what type of incident is it? Can you please send a sergeant, please? Okay, so in order for me to send a sergeant, they need to know the nature of the call. I was harassed by Chicago PD, okay? Without warrant, I was profiled, I was threatened. Okay, and did they search with any weapon? He did not draw a weapon. Okay. And did they physically hit you? He tried to drop me on several occasions. I asked for my state. Okay? He did not have on a mask. Okay. And he wore no mask and he attempted to drop you or bring you to your to your knees? Correct. Okay. And did you happen to see the badge number? I did not. Or the uh the vehicle number at all? He said his name is Officer Dicker. Okay, Officer Dicker? <laughs> Okay. And do you have a description of him? Was he black, white, Hispanic, or Asian? White, bald, male. White, bald. Have you said skinny, medium built? <sighs> medium. Medium, medium to look heavy. Okay. And uh, he was in a uniform, correct? Yes. Okay. Was, were there any other officers with him? No. He was alone. Okay. 7423 was the car number. 7423. And what prompted the stop, do you know? I wasn't leaving the lakefront quick enough, I guess. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we're going to get a sergeant over there, okay? Once they arrive, okay, once they arrive, once they arrive, do they need to call your cell phone or is there someone, um, a doorman or a doorman? I have a doorman. okay. All right. Watch the sergeant, okay? We're going to get someone over there. All right. Okay. And also, what, what, uh, what, what you can also do, because I'm going to send the sergeant over there, 
You also have the option to report this to Ebra and Cobra as well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. All right. Take a deep breath, okay? Take a deep breath. Okay. So I'm going to send the project over there. I'm also saying that you have the right to report this incident to a private in, in, uh, investigation organization that specializes in mistreatment by police officers. It's called EPRA or COPA. Okay? COPA. COPA, as well as IPRA. Thank you. You can do that two ways. You can do that over the phone or you can do that online. Okay. Okay. Watch with Sergeant. Thank you. Thank you. On August 28th, Nikita Brown found herself in a distressing situation when a police officer instructed her to leave the closed park immediately. Despite complying with the officer's orders and walking towards the exit, the situation escalated as the officer pursued her. In a video captured by Brown, the officer is heard threatening her with arrest, claiming, you can go to jail. The situation turned physical as the officer attempted to tackle Brown, leading to a struggle lasting more than a minute. Brown, in the aftermath, expressed the fear for her life during the encounter, stating, I thought I was going to die. The incident gained attention when the Civilian Office of Police Accountability released body cam footage, pledging to investigate the alleged misconduct. Officer Bruce Diker, implicated in the incident, has a concerning history with 24 allegations of misconduct filed against him. Following this case, he was placed on desk duty. Brown's lawyer argued that desk duty is insufficient, asserting that Diker should not be trusted with a position of authority. Despite the trauma, Nikita Brown expressed gratitude for surviving the encounter and emphasized her desire to prevent others from enduring a similar ordeal. The victim's call for accountability echoes in the aftermath of this troubling incident. As investigations unfold, the Chicago Police Department and COPE are tasked with determining the veracity of the allegations against Officer Diker. The incident sheds light on the importance of holding those in positions of authority accountable for their actions. In 2018, Justin Bieber found himself trailed by paparazzi, leading to a distressing 911 call. 911 emergency, what are you reporting? Hello, um, I have like five cars following me. Okay, where are you at? I'm located um, on the freeway in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, I'm passing Burham Boulevard. What freeway are you on? I'm on the 101. Which house headed um pa I'm passing Burham Boulevard. Okay, are, you know the people that are following you? No, I don't. I they're, I they're I think they're um but they're driving re they're driving really reckless. Okay, so are you sure they're following you or they're just driving crazy? No, no, I'm hundred percent they're following me. Okay, what is what are they doing to you? They're just they just will not stop following me. And you're on the freeway? Yes. Okay, and what's your name? Justin. Okay. What's your last name? Um, Johnson. Okay. You're on the southbound 101? Yes. Okay. What type of car are you in? I'm in a Fisker. A what? A Fisker. F-I-S-K-E-R. What kind of car is that? Um, it's, uh, I'm a Fisker. Okay. <laughs> and what lane are you in? I am in the, uh, far right lane. Or far left lane, sorry. And how many vehicles are following you? Uh, I think three. What type of vehicle is it? Um, it is a, a Honda or a Toyota. Like a RAV4? Uh, a Toyota RAV. Uh, it's like a no, it's like a it's a car. And then I have like a, a um a blue Toyota. They're all like uh I think they're um what they call hybrid uh, hybrid car. A hybrid car. Yeah. Okay. And they're still following behind you right now? They're still are. Uh, okay. It was basically what happened was I just, uh, I was, I was out, I was out, I was trying to go fast so that I could 
lose these people, and I got pulled over. Okay. And then the, the police told me if they were if if they kept following me to to call call again. Okay. Got gotcha. To call in. Okay. I think I have your log already on here. What? I have your call on here already. Okay. So you were already you were stopped at Tampa, right? I was. And then they're still calling. Okay. But it wasn't like they they're the ones that are driving reckless, and now I'm I'm the one that's you know, and and I'm just trying to to like not have them being on my tail. Right Absolutely, now. yeah. Before I was driving fast so that I could so that I could try to get away from them. Right. And I got pulled over myself. No, right. I've seen that earlier. That's that's the craziest thing ever. And and I tried to explain it, and then when I tried to explain it to the police officers, uh -huh. they were being very like like not nice about. It. They were just like, well, you. Your, you waive your uh, your um, your right to uh, privacy when you, because you're a celebrity. Right. But that makes absolutely no sense when they're the ones like I know I'm driving fast, but it's like they're they're the ones being dangerous. Like I don't. And then, no. he, started, and then he was just letting all the let he let all the paparazzi just around my vehicle while he was doing the whole like like station. Okay. It, which is super just like, I felt, that, like he didn't even pull me to the side, like he could have at least pulled me to a side parking lot or something, he just did it right in the middle, he didn't care, he kept saying roll down my window when I was trying to like at least, you know, I, I just felt very like. Okay, where, Justin, can you tell me where you are right now? What exit are you passing? I'm passing Music Center Walt Disney Concert, concert Hall. What's that? I'm passing Broadway, Temple Street. Okay. Hold on. As Justin Bieber's fame continued to soar, so did the relentless pursuit of paparazzi, eager to capture every moment of his life. On that fateful day in 2018, Bieber's usual drive was marred by the ominous presence of multiple vehicles tailing him, prompting a distress call for help. Surrounded by the intrusive glare of camera lenses, Bieber's anxiety escalated, fearing for his safety amidst the relentless pursuit. The 911 call captured his apprehension as he sought refuge from the relentless chase. His voice tinged with unease as he described the unnerving situation. The incident underscored the dark side of fame, where privacy becomes a luxury, and ordinary activities are overshadowed by the relentless pursuit of the paparazzi. It was an ordinary day in Gwinnett County, until an extraordinary event unfolded during peak afternoon traffic. A small, single-engine plane made an emergency landing, turning the interstate into an unexpected runway. Many 911 calls were made. When I call 911, what's the location of your emergency? Hey, um, we are driving down uh, I-85, and we just saw a plane that appeared to be going down Okay, yeah, we do have it. Okay, thank you. Hi, this is 911. We just got a hang-up call. Do you have an emergency? Yes, um, you probably got the call already, but I'm a truck driver. My, my trailer got hit by a small aircraft. Yes, we did. 985 right now. now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're on the way. Winnet County 911, what's the location of your emergency? Um, I'm driving on 85, uh, right outside of the Buford uh, coming exit. Kind of headed towards Swanee. There's a small plane that crashed into a semi truck. It's a small what that crashed into your truck? It's not into my truck. It's a small airplane that mm -hmm. crashed onto the highway into a semi truck. I did, I watched the whole thing in my rearview mirror. It's like on 985, kind of headed towards like the Buford coming exit. I I been on hold. I, I'm assuming there's probably a lot of other people calling about it too. <laughs> yes, there is. So 985 headed towards exit four. I don't know the exit off the top of my head, and um, I just know it's a Buford exit. Can you tell me the color of the semi-truck, and what side is it on, ma'am? Um, so it was going the opposite direction of me. I'm headed south towards Atlanta right now, so I guess they were headed north. I know I just saw the white bed of the truck. I'm not sure what the front color was, because I, I just watched the whole thing in my rearview mirror. It was hitting trees. It was knocking trees over. I thought it was going to land on top of a bunch of cars, and it just ran right into the semi-truck. Okay, well, thank you for calling in. Yes, you do have you to get out to it. Okay. 
Um, I just saw a plane crash on 985 North into a semi. It was like a small uh, personal, well, not commercial plane. Okay, you said you're so, on yeah. 985, right? Going towards Powell yes. County? Correct. And it happened What's right the before name? Exit 4. Right before Exit 4? You know how where 85 merges, 985 and 85 merges, if you get on to 985, it happened about maybe three quarters of a mile as you're getting on to 985 right before Exit 4. That's the two for an exit. Oh, the plane God. was had literally just crashed into a semi. The semi is on 985 that you saw? The semi and the plane were both on 985. I'm going on, I was on 985 going south, they are going north. It was like he was trying to land on 985. I mean, he was literally eye level with me and hit the side of uh, the back of a semi truck. It's like he stuck into the side of the back of the semi truck. All right, that we're is, clear on the situation. You said you were a witness? Yeah, I was a witness. I saw the whole thing. All right, I'll just let them know that you were a witness. They may give you a call back, but they're taking care of it. Thank you so much. Crystal Corona. One of the people close by saw the whole scene as she was moving in the opposite direction. Awestruck, she couldn't believe her eyes as the small plane touched down amidst the flow of traffic. Soon after, the crash site was swarmed by emergency vehicles and hazmat units. Their immediate task was to safely remove approximately 10 gallons of fuel from the aircraft. Despite the apparent intact cabin, one of the wings bore the brunt of the emergency landing. Miraculously, the pilot and passenger emerged unscathed. The surreal scene left everyone in disbelief. A damaged plane, a closed interstate, yet no injuries. A testament to the remarkable outcome of a potentially catastrophic situation. As emergency response teams swiftly took control, the situation concluded with no reported injuries. A salute to their expertise and a reminder of the unexpected twists life can take. In a startling incident in January 2023, a 911 call was made by a witness who observed a man fall 25 feet from a ladder. This is Sarasota County 911. Can you verify the address for me? I don't know. It's, it's out towards Mayaka. Sarasota. Okay. It says Sarasota. Okay, and what's nearest major intersection? Off of Fruitville. Okay. I don't know. Okay, tell me what happened. Congressman Stubbe, um, he fell out of a fell out of a tree. Okay, how old is he? I don't know, 50 years. How old are you, 55? 44? Or he just needs to make sure he's okay. No, I understand. Yeah. And like I said, I'm going to get somebody other to check him out. Just trying to get as much information for them so they can help him out better. Is he awake? Yeah. He's bruised up. A, when he just bruised up 10, uh, 15 minutes ago. Okay. How far did he fall? Uh, 20 feet. Okay. Jeez. And what caused the fall? A uh, branch hit the ladder. Any serious bleeding? One, I think his left arm is scarred up pretty good. Okay, is it spurting or pouring? No, it's really scarred up. Is he responding? Not really, somewhat. Oh, okay. Not what I normally talk to. Him. I understand. And what part of the body was injured? I know you mentioned his arm. Was there any other part of his body injured? Yeah. Several, several. Back. Oh. I don't know. I don't no, that's, no, that's fine. You're doing fine. Okay, like I said, I'm saying the paramedics to help him. Just stay on the line. I'll tell you exactly what to do next. I knocked on the door and five dogs came to the door and. She must not be in there. Like I said, just stay on the phone with me, okay? Um, okay. I'm stay on the phone? Yes, stay on the phone with me, okay? Yeah, yeah, you got a bad bruise on your back. And from now on, don't let him have anything to eat or drink because it might make him sick or cause further problems, okay? What happened? This branch right here, this big one fell. You are cutting it. As soon as that fell, you see it look like it's cracked right there. It came back in a wicked way quickly took the ladder out from under you and pull it from all the way to the gate. I will tell you, congratulations on your victory. How's he doing right now? Uh, he's got memory loss. He has what? Memory loss or something, I don't know. They're entering the neighborhood now. Just let me know when they're there, okay? Oh, man. What's going on? Just bad sight, man. It's nothing, I mean, it's just emotional sight, that's all. <sighs> let me know when they're there, okay? They're here, they're here. Okay, I'm going to let you go, okay? They'll take over from here. The man in question was Congressman Greg Stubbe, who suffered multiple injuries during a fall while trimming tree limbs on his Sarasota property. Congressman Stubbe took to Twitter to update the public on his condition. He mentioned spending the night in the ICU but assured everyone that he was on the road to recovery. 
Expressing his gratitude, he acknowledged the outpouring of prayers and support from friends, family, and the community. A subsequent tweet conveyed his appreciation for the exceptional care provided by Sarasota Memorial Hospital. In a poignant moment, Congressman Stube shared a photo on social media standing alongside the individual who played a crucial role in saving his life by promptly calling 911. Congressman Greg Stube, representing Florida's 17th District, which includes Sarasota County, Charlotte County, and parts of Lee County, faced a challenging ordeal. However, with the support of his community and quality health care, he remains resilient on his journey to recovery.